RTX Corporation is poised to grow as a company. Let's figure out how much hard jack this business makes. Now, I think it's a, actually a trifecta opportunity. That means it's buying back shares, it's growing its earnings, and it has a market multiple expansion opportunity. It's trading too cheaply. Why? Because the stock, the street is underpricing the merger between Raytheon Corporation and United Technologies. Now, let's take a deep dive into these numbers and figure out how much cash money we can make by buying the stock today and holding it for 10 years. You ready? Let's get to work. Hello, welcome to Rational Investing. My name is Cameron Stewart, CFA. Thank you very much for watching the channel. I greatly appreciate it. This week, we're going to take a look at RTX Corporation, and we're going to understand the underlying value of the cash flow within this business. If we bought it today, how much it would be worth. Now, on this channel, we are rational investors. We look for the hard truth, the hard facts of cash that the businesses generate and try to pay a reasonable price for these stocks that we intend to hold for 10, 20, 30 years. That's the idea behind equity investing. It is not, not trading on the stock price. That is a fool's game. You're simply betting that someone else in the future will pay you a higher price than stock. You want to own a company that underlying value is strong and you can substantiate what you're buying by the cash flow that it generates. What we do is we look for five key attributes for stock as a basic fundamental starting point to begin more due diligence. And number one, you want a stock that's growing top line revenue, not just revenue per share or earnings per share, but total revenue. Number two, you want strong earnings. Uh, we use enterprise level earnings, EBITDA. Number three, strong free cash flow. Number four, low debt. And number five, a well-priced stock. What is a well-priced stock? A well-priced stock is simply a stock with a forecast that is conservative. And based on the return of that forecast, you expect to beat the market. That's the idea. We want to outperform the market and we choose companies with conservative forecast and wait for the stock price to come down so that the conservative forecast yields an above average uh, return. Anybody can estimate the stocks can continue to grow as fast as it possible. And yeah, the return is going to look very good if you have a 20% per year growth rate on your earnings. But most likely that's going to be wrong. All forecasts or most all forecasts are wrong. So you want to build a forecast with as much conservative nature as possible so that when you're wrong, it doesn't impact your underlying value as much. Okay, let's dive along into RTX Corporation. Now, RTX Corporation was formed in 2020 by the merger of Raytheon Corporation and United Technologies. They folded them together in an all-stock merger of equals. They also carved out two businesses, Otis, the elevator company, and Carrier were sold and IPO'd as a, uh, their own public companies. Now, a couple years ago when the stock was, uh, in 2020, when the merger was announced, I did a video where I broke apart 10 years of data between United Technologies and uh, Raytheon and spun out Otis and Carry. I'll show you exactly how to do that. I'll put a link in the description below. Check out my old video where I stitched together two massive companies. I IPO two others. And I show you the, how the, the breakout and the value that can be created. And in the forecast that I had uh, for 2023 earnings on that business, we hit the number. Uh, that stock price was $60 when I reviewed it. It's now $85, so you would have made money and had a great position for this business that's going to continue to rip. That's what I think at least. Um, but let's take a look now at the consolidated number. One, uh, one warning for you, when businesses merge like we had with United Technologies and Raytheon Corporation, uh, and they want to restate their earnings. They'll restate three years of numbers. That's what they're obligated to do. But they are not going to go back and restate decades of information because it's simply impractical, if not impossible, to do. So when you look at this stock, you pull up 10 years of history, you're going to see seven years of United Technology financials, only United F Technology financials. You are not going to see any of the Raytheon numbers that were added onto that or the carve out of Otis or Carrier. Going forward from 2018 to present, they have restated those numbers and show that's about five years ago. They've, they've restated the numbers and show you the consolidated entity. But if you go back and look at the trends, they're not gonna line up. So check out my video that I released in 2020 where I do the historical finances if you wanna see how to stitch two companies together. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna simply pull the numbers that RTX Corporation releases, which is the combination, the consolidated numbers as of 2018 and forward. The prior year is going to be United Technologies. Now, 
What do they do? Well, they do very cool things. They make weapon systems. They make engines through their Pratt & Whitney division. And they make a lot of technology that's behind airplane systems uh, and infrastructure that is woven into all kinds of military systems and into corporate America for the, the measurement in, of, of, of information that they use. So what does RTX Corporation do? Well, they have three divisions. They have the Pratt & Whitney division, which does engines for jet fighter systems and whole uh, commercial aviation. They're growing sales at 15% year over year last year. They've got the Raytheon missile and defense system that's growing 12% year over year. And finally, they have the Collins Aerospace Division growing 17% in sales year over year. Uh, the business is, is pretty broad. You've got um, 11 million customers moved every day from their infrastructure, $120 billion of uh, content flying in the air, and they've got uh, $73 billion of uh, defense backlog spending, which is what I'm pretty interested in. I think that's gonna continue to drive revenue north. Let's take a look at the Cash Flow Club's one pager. So I've got it printed out here. I wanna dive through this and give you a breakdown. Now, I'm inside the Cash Flow Club. If you wanna take a look at it, you can look at uh, www.cashflowinvestingpro.com. Check out that, that site. But let's go through 10 years of data and just show you a little bit about this company. So December year end uh, is their, is their uh, fiscal year. And I've got 10 years of data behind me. Revenue, $56 billion in 2013 to 67 billion in 2022. Now, what I wanna caution you is these, this data only reflects the merger of these two companies from 2018 and forward. So if you look at 2018, the revenue was only $34 billion. So the growth rate between 34 billion and 67 billion is a doubling, a doubling of revenue in these five years. So when we look at the entire history of this business, it's much different than if you look at just the recent years post merger. Now, why do they do that? Well, uh, restating earnings is a very risky and, and, and difficult business to do as a CFO. Uh, when you're communicating to your investors. So they're only gonna restate so many years of earnings. They're not gonna go back and do the full history of the two companies, it's simply unrealistic. So when you look at this data, the last several years here, 2013 to 2017 is only United Technologies data. That was the platform that, that, um, that Raytheon Corporation merged into. So it's excluding the Raytheon data. So this, these numbers are too low because it's missing an entire new company. If you wanna see uh, how to stitch those together, check out my other video on Raytheon that I did in 2022 when the merger was announced. I stitched those two together. I, I carved out Otis and Carrier, did those IPOs and showed you what an adjusted number was. And fortunately for us, that, that, that projection that I made actually hit. They hit the earnings in 2023 that I was forecasting back in 2022 and that stock is up as a result. So let's keep going. EBITDA for this business, I'm gonna just talk post-merger. So 2018, it was 5.5 billion. It's now $11 billion. That is a double-digit growth rate on EBITDA. Debt, last year debt's $33.8 billion. That does not include any pension liability. I'm just looking at capitalized leases and long-term debt. That is three times EBITDA, so it checks the box for us on the debt level. It's at the maximum that we would like to see. Um, but it's, it's definitely come down post-merger. They've been buying that debt, which is excellent. Also, revenue and EBITDA both checked the box for us. They were growing nicely in double-digit territory. Market cap, a little wonky, again, because it's only um, uh, United Technologies um, historically, but recently the stock, uh, the market cap is up from, say, roughly $100 billion at the merger to $183 billion. Multiples, enterprise value EBITDA, you're looking at the 18 to 16 range, and I cover the debt le levels. It's at three times debt to EBITDA, which is the maximum we wanna see for a company that's got leverage. Cash flow from uh, operations, I've adjusted these, so we're looking in this kind of $6 billion range in 2018 to seven and a half billion in 2022. Now I've adjusted that seven and a half billion last year of cash flow for stock-based comp. I also added back about $750 million of inventory investment. They made $1.5 billion of investment in working capital into their inventory. And I said, you know what, going forward, I'm not gonna, that's, I'm not gonna do that every single year. So I added back half credit to kind of like normalize, if you will, the working capital for the business. 
They put a little over $2 billion a year into the CapEx of the business. They're estimating $2.5 billion next year. We think that's fine. The debt payments, they are perfectly leveraged. They don't need to pay down or borrow more. So this this two here is beautiful. It just passes all the cash flow through. And they make about $5.2 billion, depending upon the working capital one year or the next, $5.2 billion of free cash flow. They're projecting 4.2 next year. So down slightly, probably because they're continuing to invest in working capital like we saw last year. Shares outstanding fell year over year. So this is where you get your stock buyback, the portion of the the, um, the trifecta, where you got 1.5 billion shares outstanding to 1.486 billion outstanding. If I divide the two, I'm in this range of free cash flow that's maybe $3.5, maybe a little less if you're, if you're um, given what they're saying, next year's cash flow will be $4.2 billion they're investing in their working capital. So maybe it's somewhere between this, say two and change and three and change someplace in there on an annual basis. And that means that 100 bucks a share is trading at 35, 3.5% free cash flow yield, a little bit of a growth premium there on that, on that stock. So that's kind of the, the, the general overview. Let's forecast this business and figure out how much money it's going to make long term. So if we scroll down on the one pager, and again, you can find the one pager at my website, cashflowinvestingpro.com. What you're going to find here is you're going to find a forecast of EBITDA. The street is predicting just shy of $13 billion of EBITDA for this business next year. That's about a 14%, 13, 14% growth rate year over year on earnings. And that's a combination of both organic growth, price change. When people say organic, they just mean volume. But volume or organic sales growth, price increase, and synergies that are continuing to come out. Synergies means laying people off. Uh, sadly, it's reality. Um, this is rational investing. We're straight talk here. But you're, you know, synergies from laying people off and consolidating divisions because United Technologies and Raytheon don't, doesn't need two investor relations departments because they were both public at the time they stitched them together. So there's all kinds of things that over time they're going to learn that they can stitch together. Uh, and they're boosting earnings. So I've got a, a higher growth rate here, and then it kind of tapers off to a 4% kind of a conservative long-term uh, number that I think the aerospace, aero, de aero defense space can, aerospace and defense, there it is, uh, industry can continue to grow at. So this means I've got a target of about 20.5 billion in EBITDA out 10 years from now. Now, is that right? I don't know. It is a guess, but it's conservative in my opinion, this is my channel, it's my opinion, because they've been growing double digits for the last several years, right? When you look at 2018 to 2022 numbers, they're growing above 10% annually. Then I've got 2013 as 10%. I bring that down to a very modest single digit for a long, long time. So all they have to do is be in the ballpark of $20 billion 10 years from now, which is a less than doubling. I'm gonna give it a 16 times market multiple it's currently trading at 12 and a half times that number. So if I get that number, that means my market multiple expands over time, meaning, meaning the street gives more credit for every dollar earned in the future than now, which is a good thing for us if, 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 if you're buying today. That means I have an enterprise value of $329 billion, less some debt, I get a market cap of $267 billion divided by the shares I send, I get a stock price of $180 per share and 24 cents under the EBITDA market multiple method of valuation. And that's one that method of value, valuing a company. Let's take a look at free cash flow, the absolute rock bottom um, truth of a business. Let's figure out what we have. So we're estimating free cash flow at $2.86. Now, recall the working capital uh, they're investing. So there's a little bit of, of, of wiggle in these numbers. Cash flow uh, consuming wildly year to year. That's why people use um, the income statement is because the income statement lets you, lets you smooth out some of those investments, uh, whereas cash is cash. So I have roughly $2.86 here, and I grow it at the same rate I grow EBITDA. So I'm looking long-term $4 and change, $4.61 of earnings per share, excuse me, cash flow per share. I apply a 3.5% yield on that, a little bit of a premium there, and I get $131.61 of a stock price. So I have two stock prices. I'm gonna average them and say, it's worth about $150 out 10 years with kind of a thumb in the air guess. That's what it is. It's a guess.
But I think from my perspective, it's my channel, do your own due diligence, consult your own financial advisor. This isn't financial advice, just showing you how, to, how I think about it. From my perspective, a growth story that has 4% year over year for, for half the time is a conservative number for a company that has, that has a history of positive growth and with the last five years of that growth being greater than double digit annually. That's very nice to me. And these market multiples are not out of this world. 16 times they've currently traded at as high as 22 times, as low as 15. So on the downside for me, downside you're talking 15 times earnings, upside 22, I've got a forecast of 16, I'm buying at 12 and a half, I feel like that's a good justification for market multiple expansion. So I consolidate the two, I've got my stream free cash flow, this is not dividends, this is what you own, your pro rata ownership as a per unit investor of the overall free cash flow of the business. They can choose to A, dividend this money out. They can choose to buy back stock. They can go make acquisitions or can sit on the balance sheet. Those are the four things. The only four things they can do with that money. Pay it out to you in dividend, buy back shares, do nothing with it, sit on the balance sheet, or go make an acquisition. That's what they can do with this cash. And if they do that either way, it's going to impact the stock price and you're going to receive it. So either it shows up here or it shows up at this number, but it's always counted. I get it and I get an 11% annualized return. That is an 11% every single year uh, return for, for, for holding the stock for 10 years. That seems really good to me, especially in this kind of market. Um, I like this stock and I like this, um, this company. Let's take a look at a distribution. If you're looking at this, uh, this video and time has moved on, the stock is no longer $85 a share, let's figure out what that return would be given the same underlying assumption. So if the stock price falls to 77, or well, let's say $69, it's a 14% IRR, that's 50% greater than the average return on the stock market, that'd be one heck of a deal. Remember, I was looking at this stock earlier in 2022 when it was $60 a share. It was a very, very nice return. Now it's come up a little bit, but I still think there's opportunity for the trifecta. Again, the trifecta is earnings growth, market, a share repurchasing, and a market multiple expansion. Go check out my Google versus Domino's IPO video where I look at 15 years of stock return if you would have bought Domino's pizza at the same, it IPO the same year as Google. But if you bought Domino's pizza, Domino's pizza would have outperformed with 5,000% return because Google would have made 3,000% return. Why? because Domino's IPO cheaply at seven times earnings, it traded later at 25 times earnings. It also paid a dividend, bought back stock and grew earnings. Google traded at 22 times, it currently trades at 22 times, it IPO'd at 22 times. So no market multiple expansion. They also didn't buy back any stocks. So the only thing that helped Google grow is their earnings and earnings grew very quickly, but they were not compounded by the lower share count or the, um, or the market multiple expansion like, like, like um, a Domino's. So it's very important. Uh, take a look at this data. What I think, if I'm going to give this stock a rating, I think it's a good. I think it's a good stock. Uh, the, 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 the space itself is very sticky. Uh, there are very few players in this space. It's kind of a licensed oligopoly. Uh, they have great technology. Uh, they, they have a backlog of customers that want their product. They're able to grow uh, their, their sales revenue organically, which means volume, not, necess not just on price raises. Uh, like the the Hershey's of the world or some of the other, uh, the Procter and Gamble's of the world that are just pricing and inflation. Uh, these guys are actually selling more stuff, uh, which you wanna, you wanna see that. So I think this is a very interesting stock. Take a look, at, throw me a comment down below. Let me know what you think. If you like RTX Corporation and go back and look at my old video. I will show you how as a CFO, you can fold two companies together because the street does not like doing a lot of that work and you can um, uncover some deep value by finding stocks that, um, that, that, that represent, that are, that are not being accurately reflected the true value. So that's, uh, that's RTX Corporation, again, formerly known as Raytheon Corporation and, and United Technologies, also Otis and Carrier, which they spun out. You can find those companies, they're public on their own. Um, my name is Cameron Stewart. This is Rational, Inve Rational Investing. Uh, take a look at my website if you want 
to learn more about how to value stocks, I teach a course, highly recommend you take it. Uh, it'll give you a wonderful foundation on how to value companies. I teach you how to find revenue, how to calculate EBITDA, how to calculate debt, how to think about forecasting a business, how to calculate free cash flow. We walk through Apple as an example. It kind of lays the foundation for how to think about businesses as you're investing. Again, if you're a stock buyer, you should not be buying off of price. Price is an illusion. It is, it is like high school. It's a, it, it's, it's the popularity contest. This rational investing is a, is a cash weighing business. We want to figure out how much Jack a company makes and what is a reasonable price to pay for that company. I think uh, RTX is a very reasonable, reasonably priced company. Uh, and I can teach you how to I find those or isolate those companies. Uh, if you want to take the course, you can also sign up for the cash flow club at cashflowinvestingpro.com. Thank you so much. Uh, shoot me a comment. Let me know what stock you want to see next. I hope you enjoyed the Raytheon, uh, excuse me, the uh, RTX, uh, um, the RTX review. And uh, we'll talk next week. Take care. Bye-bye.